Welcome to the vlog, Kato here, and today we have an exciting episode, a $300 buy-in at the 1-3 game, and very quickly I pick up my first hand, ace, king of clubs, in middle position. It's 5 p.m., so a nice evening session, the under-the-gun player limps. I'm going to raise up the action, I make it 15, it fools around, back to the under-the-gun player who makes a call, going heads up to the flop, 34 in the pot, and it comes out 8 high, no club, I'm sitting with 2 over cards, which has potential. Actions check to me. Now I have the option of I going to bet or check. Well, this board favors my opponent's range, so I'm going to check. I still have some showdown value. The turn is a six, bringing another diamond, pairing the board. And this time my opponent is going to take a small stab at it, makes it 18. Looking at this right now, I probably could have made the call, but it is a large bet, two thirds pot size bet. And so I decide I'm just going to play it safe. I'm still at the beginning of my session. I have plenty of time to actually make a hand rather than call down with ace high, so I make the fold. As you may or may not know, I'm selling 40% of my main event action. I announced it two days ago, already more than 50% of it sold. So if you want to get in on the fun, on the sweat, on the glory, potentially, shoot me that email ASAP. The very next hand I get is 5-4 of clubs in middle position, 285 in my stack. I open the action to 10. The cutoff makes the call. The big blind defense, three ways going to the flop. $30 in the pot. It comes out jack high. A paired board. There are two clubs. So I'm drawing to my flush, but it's a weak flush, and with the board already paired, I could be drawing dead. I'm going to continue betting my hand. I have a lot of equity. I make it 15. I get one caller. The cutoff comes along 60 in the pot, and the turn is a club. Not only do I make my flush, but now I'm drawing to a gut shot straight flush. My opponent is an older gentleman who I played against a lot. He's a nut peddler. Very, very tight. If I check to him, he's definitely checking back, so I'm going to continue putting money in the pot. I make it 30. And this gentleman is not going anywhere, slowly stacking out chips, puts him in the middle, takes no time at all to make his decision. Seems pretty comfortable and confident. I double check my hand. It's a strong hand, but there's a lot that can beat it. The river comes out a king. And now my opponent, it's on me, action's on me. My opponent stacks his chips up and just ships his whole stack in. <laughs> Where's the action? The dealer pushes his chips back and confirms the action is on me, but I got all the confirmation about my opponent's hand strength that I need. He's definitely not doing this ever as a bluff. He's definitely not doing this as an angle. I think he just got overexcited. I checked to him. He jams it all in, and I have already made my decision. There's absolutely no way I have the stronger hand. In fact, I don't even think he would jam with the ace high flush. He has to have a full house, and so I fold my hand face up, hoping that he'll show. Of course, I get no love, but I don't really need it. I'm confident that I made the right fold. This session has started off headed in the wrong direction, down to 192 in my stack, and I pick up pocket eights in the big blind. This hand quickly turns into a limp fest. The under the gun player limps. The middle position player does as well. The low jack and the high jack do. And then it gets to the button who has something else in mind. He makes it 17. I'm definitely going to see a flop with my strong pocket pair. And we only get one other caller. The high jack comes along. So three way action going to the flop. 61 in the pot and it comes out nine high. This is a pretty good flop for my hand. I just have to make sure I don't get sucked into an overinflated pot. Action checks around to the original pre flop aggressor and he goes for a large sizing of 40. And this is exactly what I was concerned about happening. If I call this bet on the flop, I'm gonna be playing out of position with the marginal hand, and I'm gonna probably be facing some aggression on two more streets. And so I decided to play it safe and I make the fold. Luckily, we're not gonna to have to wait a long time for the next hand. Only 20 minutes into the session, have already played three hands and I pick up my fourth ace king offsuit on the button, 175 in my stack. The low jack makes it 12. And something very interesting happens. You can see the low jack has already bet. And then the high jack throws in chips. He thinks he's opening the action. Realizes there's already bet. Pulls his bet back. And decides he wants a three bet now. He didn't bet out of turn. He threw the chips in without realizing there's already a bet ahead of him. He should be bound to the call. It starts to get a little complicated. Because when he puts his three bet of 40 into the middle of the pot. The player to my left calls him out for it. Says no you called. Pulled back your bet and put in a three bet. And he actually calls the floor over. So now we have the floor involved. The player in C1 saying, no, no, I just put out a three bet. I didn't do anything. And the floor, who doesn't, you know, as he says, she says, doesn't have any information from the dealer, decides, okay, the three bet stands. And so now I'm in a very interesting position. I have a strong hand, but my opponent is very eager to put in a three bet. I don't see any reason why this would be a three bet bluff. It's just not worth it, especially with a small amount of money in the pot. And so I can assume that he has a strong hand, jacks or better. Do I jam? Do I fold? Do I call? I was a little shook by this, and I decide to just make the call. And you can see I slam my chips down, kind of like I talked about in a previous vlog. And in my case, it does mean indecision, like I assumed it meant in the previous vlog. Very interesting reading some of my own tells. I think the call is bad. This is definitely a jam or fold situation. Without any information in a vacuum, probably a jam. Given this information, possibly a fold. 
Everyone else folds. We're headed to the flop. It comes out seven high, and the hijack, who is so eager to get money in pre-flop, now wants to get $110 in, and there's no way I can stand up to this bet. I muck my hand. I want to hear what you guys think about this one in the comments. Surely he had something pretty strong, right? I decide it's time to top off again. Back to 300 in for 465, and the dealer, as I'm giving him my money, passes me some cards, and I take down a look at Ace King Offsuit. Perfect time to top up a fresh $300 stack. The middle position player opens at 15. I'm putting in a three bet this time. I got some ammunition in the kitchen. I make it 40. The middle position player calls. We're going heads up to the flop. Almost $100 in the pot, and it comes similar to last hand. Eight high paired board. I'm starting to get a little frustrated. My lack of aggression is costing me, and so I'm going to go aggressively at this pot. The middle position checks to me. I make it 55, and I get a fold, scooping a small victory, finally up to 344. It feels fantastic dragging a pot, even if it's a small one. It feels even better to support your local creator. Drop a thumbs up on the video. Your interaction helps a lot. Ace Jack offsuit. In the big blind next hand, 388 in my stack. The under the gun player limps. The hijack opens at 15. The button makes the call. I'm just going to defend. I don't think that I should be three-betting ace-jack offsuit. Probably just ace-jack suited. The under-the-gun player makes the call. We're going four ways to the flop. 61 in the pot. It comes out queen high. Once again, a whiff flop for me. Action checks through to the turn. It's an ace. An ace on the board. Now I've connected. The player to my left makes it 15. The hijack across the table makes the call. Action's back on me. I'm just going to make the call as well. No need to inflate the pot. The river comes in eight, pairing the board. It checks all the way through, and I think I'm going to scoop it until the hijack flips up. But Ace King Offsuit didn't want to bet the river because of the paired board. And so I guess I lost the minimum on that one, but just another frustrating hand not going my way today. To make matters worse, after getting stuck, I have to wait over an hour for my next playable hand. I finally get a beautiful one. Pocket Kings in middle position, 264 in my stack. The under the gun player opens to 15. Of course, of course, I'm going to put in a three bet. I'm going to go 3x. I make it 45, and then the under-the-gun player just jams all in 140. I am thrilled to get it in pre-flop. Exactly what I was looking for. Now I just have to dodge an ace on the flop, on the turn, and on the river. We're going to the flop. The dealer puts it out. Queen high, looking great. Not connected at all. A 6 on the turn and a 9 on the river. Surely my hand is good. My opponent flips up pocket queens. Nice hand. Woo, baby. Yeah, that's what I said. 155? 155 is money to me. Can you take these away from me? <laughs> I finally realized that today is just not going to be my day. I decide to salvage what few chips I have left. Take it to the cage, a tournament of cold hard cash in for 500, out for 108 for a loss of 392. Sometimes you just have to come back when the cards aren't so cold. Thank you so much for watching. Kato out. And if you enjoyed that video, why not enjoy another? You have two great options on the screen. You can also subscribe. Thank you so much for your support. Enjoy. And if you want one of these gorgeous pirate card protectors, link in the description below. Thank you for your support.